Eric Dodds and John Tay Kavon Collier were the picture-perfect couple, admired by their enormous following on social media for unapologetically showcasing their love and vibrant personalities. Their captivating content and undeniable chemistry had earned them the adoration of nearly 1 million followers on TikTok, as well as a strong thriving presence on other popular platforms like OnlyFans. The beloved couple was on the rise, and their future as gay influential content creators was looking bright and promising. However, their path to greatness would take an unexpected turn, and their newfound fame would soon turn into infamy. In a twist of fate, a string of unfortunate events unfolded, involving a stolen car and an unwavering determination to retrieve it at any cost, which would subsequently entangle the couple in a web of trouble that would ultimately jeopardize their once promising future. On August 1st, 2022, at around 1 in the afternoon, law enforcement officials from the Walker County Sheriff's Department and Rosville Police Department swiftly reacted to a distress call reporting gunshots on East Peachtree Street in Rosville, Georgia. Upon reaching the location, the diligent deputies and officers were met with a grim scene. Tragically, they uncovered the lifeless body of Dakota Bradshaw, a 29-year-old man who had succumbed to the gunshot wounds inside his residence. In an attempt to save his life, Bradshaw was promptly transported to Erlanger Hospital, but unfortunately, his injuries proved fatal. Bradshaw was pronounced deceased. He was known for always having a smile on his face. He graduated near the top of his class in high school, and he was hoping to pursue a career in cybersecurity. He was a son, a brother, and by all accounts, an amazing friend. Witnesses told police they saw a red truck and a blue Dodge Challenger leaving the home of the incident, and described a shooter getting into the red truck and speeding away. The shocking incident led to the arrest of John Tay Collier on April 8th, followed by his extradition to Georgia. Initially, Eric Dodds defended John Tay Collier's innocence. He posted this video on TikTok after John Tay's arrest. So for the past couple of days in the media, I've been seeing like a lot of things about John and y'all are concerned about John. Is he okay? Has he harmed someone? Like, has he did anything to someone? No, he has not done anything to no one. Y'all know John. John will not harm a soul. He's the most free-spirited, caring person that I know to myself. He loves me even more than I even love myself, you guys. So I just wanted to get on here and update it that John is okay. I am okay, you guys. I'm okay. Everything is good. My baby will be home soon. He is not harmed a soul you guys and i just wanted to clear the air i just wanted to clear all the he say she say and everything like that is just making me mad guys he even created a gofundme page to support his boyfriend's claims however eric was eventually named as a second suspect in bradshaw's murder and was also apprehended two days later on april 10th eric dodds and jonte collier's popular tiktok accounts came into play in this investigation the GBI says, while investigating the case, they wrote over 70 search warrants, searched endless social media accounts, and collected phone data to track the defendants from Huntsville to Chattanooga to where the murder occurred. While investigating their social media accounts, they identified the red pickup truck and blue Dodge Charger they were looking for. During the preliminary trial on October 25th, GBI agent Daniel Nicholson presented the state's case against Eric Dodds and John Tate Collier. According to the state, the motive behind the murder revolved around the stolen blue Dodge Charger belonging to John Tate Collier. In an attempt to recover the car, a group of four individuals, including John Tate Collier, Eric Dodds, Eric Dodds' brother, Darius Woods, and their friend, Deja Collins, set out on a journey from Huntsville, Alabama to Rosville, Georgia. The plan was for Jonte to retrieve his car while Deja drove it back to Huntsville with Eric driving the transport vehicle. But things did not go as planned. Colin's job specifically was to be the one who drove off with the Challenger. To get to Brad Shaw's, he says Collins rode along in a red truck with Collier, Dodds, and others to get the car, and everyone was armed. 
Collins told Nicholson that Dodds was highly emotional, crying in rage, and carrying a rifle sporting an army green camo design. The agent says Dobbs reassured Ms. Collins that he would protect her as she took the challenger. Nicholson says Collins told him she heard four to five gunshots as she raced from the red truck to the blue Dodge. Unfortunately, all four travelers were eventually apprehended and charged. However, it was the testimony of Deja Collins, who made a plea deal in exchange for being an eyewitness, that ultimately unraveled Jonte Collier and Eric Dodd's case. Deja testified that the car was not stolen by Dakota Bradshaw, but rather by a friend of Eric's brother named Dede. Dede had been staying with Jonte and Eric at the time when he decided to steal Jonte's car and drive it back to Dakota Bradshaw's residence. Dede did not know Dakota Bradshaw, but was familiar with his girlfriend who lived there. Fortunately, Jonte had two air tags in the car and was able to track it back to Rosville. Upon arrival, Deja Collins witnessed Jonte and Eric exiting the vehicle, with Jonte getting into the blue Dodge Charger. Eric noticed someone in the window of the house where the car was parked, and shortly after, five gunshots rang out. Contrary to their expectations, the person in the window was not Day Day, but Dakota Bradshaw himself. The murder weapon used was an AR-15 assault rifle. The trial lasted one week, and after two days of deliberation, Collier and Dodds were found guilty of eight crimes, including felony murder. In Georgia, the minimum sentence for such offenses is life imprisonment, with the possibility of death penalty as the maximum punishment. Defendants given a life sentence will not be considered for parole until they have served 30 years. Eric was given a life sentence without the possibility of parole and an additional five years for possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony. Jonte received a life sentence with the possibility of parole and an additional five years as well. Both men were sentenced on Friday, June 23, 2023. Deja Collins pleaded guilty while the case against Darius Woods is still pending. It is believed that Eric received the harsher sentence because he was the defendant accused of firing the fatal shot that tragically ended Dakota Bradshaw's life. However, during the trial, the defense presented a case that seemed to indicate that Darius Woods was the one who actually fired the weapon. According to their case, Darius allegedly separated from the rest of the group in Chattanooga and arrived in Rossville after the group had already left. The defense claimed that Darius was responsible for the fatal shot that took the life of Dakota Bradshaw. This theory challenges the initial accusations made against Jonte and Eric, adding another layer of complexity to the case. The conviction of Jonte and Eric has caused a significant division of opinions among the public, leading to a worldwide debate. Many individuals, including their families, are reluctant to accept the verdict and find it difficult to comprehend. Despite their confusion, they remain resolute in their determination to pursue the appeal process. What are your thoughts on this case? Do you think their life sentence is too harsh, or do you think it's a fair one? Let me know in the comment section, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more LGBTQ true crime.